Hey, welcome to this activity for programming in C Sharp. As you can see on the screen, we're going to be working on an application called the Car Store. And the purpose of this application is to demonstrate objects and classes. Also, how to demonstrate the separation of your classes, your models, you might call them, from the actual uh, interface. So we're going to make a console app, which is a text interface, and then we're going to make a Windows Forms app, which is obviously a graphical graphical user interface. And so both of these two programs will rely on the same class library. And so I'm going to take you through step by step on programming in C Sharp and Visual Studio to build a car class application. So let's get started. So you can see I'm at my Windows desktop now and I'm going to be running Visual Studio and I'm picking version 2017. So currently there's 15 and 17 both on my computer and uh, you can probably use 15 if your computer's a little bit old. All of the features should still work the same as what we're going to demonstrate here. So let's create a new project here and let's get started. So let's go to File and New Project. So as you can see from the New Project options we have several different things. We're going to pick the Class Library and then we're going to later build a console app and then we're going to create a Windows Forms app. So all three of these will be in this same project. So we'll start with a class library because we're going to define the classes for our cars. So let's give it a name. This is called the car class library. How about? Okay, so the project's open and running. You can see that in the Solution Explorer on the right here, we have one class called class1.cs. If you can't see that, I think you can go to View, or is it the um, Window menu? So it looks like the View menu has things. So if you can't find your Solution Explorer, if it disappears for some reason, you get it closed accidentally, um, you can bring it back here under the View menu and choose Solution Explorer. There it is. Okay, so I want to get rid of the Class 1. We're not going to need him. So it says you will delete him permanently. Now we are going to create a new class, so let's go into the class library area, right click, choose add, and a new item. So we're going to pick a class here and give it a name. So we could call it class 1, but instead here I'm going to call this thing car. So that's the first object in our application. So a car needs some properties and needs some methods. So the first thing I want to do is create a property for this thing. Now I could start typing public and property names, but I could also use what's called a shortcut. So I'm going to type in the word prop. And then on my keyboard I tap tab twice. And instantly you can see that there is a property that is defined. Okay, so now we have um, on the screen we have a property. It's called my property and it's an integer. Well, I'm going to double click this and change this to a make. So that's the car's make. So that would be like Dodge or Ford or Chrysler or something like that. And since it's a name, we're going to name it as a string as the type. Now the getters and setters in C Sharp are listed right here. It just says there is the ability to get and set this value. In Java, it requires a little bit more coding than that. So I'm going to put in another prop and tab tab. This one is going to be called the model. Now you notice I'm using capital letters here. That's kind of a strange thing for Java programmers as well. Usually capitals are, rever are rever reserved for the class name and properties are lowercase to begin with. So we have a make and a model. Let's do prop and this time I'm going to create a price. So a price is not an integer, it's not a string. Let's call it a decimal. So a decimal will give you the ability to do two decimal places. Now some people will put in doubles or floats. Decimals are recommended for currency. Okay, so now I want this class to have the ability to be publicly visible. So I'm going to put in the word public in front of the class name. All right, so now we need some methods here. We need some uh, ways to construct the car. So when somebody creates a new car, we need to have a function that is called that will create the car. So we will do um, public and car and do a parentheses. So what that means is that if they create a car with no parameters, what are we going to provide them as the default values? So we need to assign them such things like as uh, the make is going to be equal to uh, nothing yet, how about? 
and that'll be the default value. And the model is the same. So you can put in some message that says, hey, we haven't initialized this. And then the price is going to be equal to 0, 0.00. Now, you could also, in most programming I mean, languages with object-oriented programming, you could put the word this.make, and this.model, and this.price. So that is optional here. So we have a problem here with price. It says you are typing in a, uh, a decimal number, obviously. So it says here use the m suffix to do a literal um, string for uh, a dollar. So that's your uh, that's your way to write it. So the this dot make is optional, and this dot um, model and this dot price. So you can see that it does tell you that it can be simplified. Java programmers will likely be using this all the time. Anyway, since it is optional, I'm going to take it out. All right, let's go in to make another constructor now. So what happens if somebody provides us with a specific kind of car? So let's do public car again. But this time I'm going to provide three different um, parameters. So let's go string. So I'm going to specifically use just generic uh, types of parameters. I'm going to use uh, A, B, and uh, decimal C. Now, a lot of times people put in actual names like make, model, and uh, price. So that makes sense for people that understand the difference between the uh, values that are inside the function and the parameters, but I'm going to try to specify them as A, B, C to distinguish that they're different. So let's say I say make is going to be equal A, and model is going to be equal uh, B, and the price is going to be equal to C. So that is a, a constructor with parameters, a parameterized constructor. So in just a few minutes, we're going to actually create some instances of these, and you will see how these constructors are, are, are designed. Okay, so we're going to stop here on this video, and uh, in the next, we're going to create some instances of a car, and so you can see how these objects are actually supposed to be implemented in a real program. So hang on, we'll see that in the next video.